Okay, hello and welcome. This is SFU Math 232. My name is Brenda Davison. This is uh, section 5.1, uh, Dynamical Systems and Markov Chains. So this could be a very short lecture just to show uh, an application, really, of, for the most part, uh, with a bit of nomenclature, matrix multiplication and taking the powers of uh, matrices. So uh, we'll just uh, have this as an application, a little bit of vocabulary to learn, and we can see how we can say something about the long-term behavior of a system. Okay, so just a few words like usual in these lectures. Uh, dynamical system, that's a uh, finite set of variables whose uh, values change over time, as opposed to a static system, which doesn't change over time. Um, the value of a variable at a point in time is called the state of the dynamical system. And if you have a, a vector composed of different states, it's called a state vector. Okay, so there's some examples uh, written here, celestial mechanics, predator-prey, ecological system, uh, market share. Okay, so I'm just going to write this celestial mechanics one out. We, we have a vector um, x like that, and what it captures is the position of the Earth at some time t, the position of the Moon at the same time t, and the position of the sun at the time t. So these are, uh, uh, this is a state vector and each one of those entries is a state of the uh, dynamical system. The earth is a dynamical system, it is moving in time. Okay, so we capture that in a vector. Similarly, we can have our vector with, uh, you know, populations of rabbits and foxes or market share of, uh, of viewers on a variety of different uh, TV stations. Okay, so now we want to get what is the idea of a Markov chain. And so uh, we'll just uh, give an informal uh, definition of um, probability, and that's the number of successful experiments that you have divided by the total number of experiments. So the classic example, if you flip a coin, the probability um, uh, of getting a heads when you flip the coin is 0.5. The probability of getting a tails is also 0.5. Um, if you throw a, a die, uh, and uh, you, it's a six-sided die with this, you know, one to six on on the on the different faces of the cube. Then each each outcome on the die is uh, you have a chance of getting one in six. So one in six chance of getting a five, but one in six chance of getting a one, etc. So uh, we have that idea of a probability. And then if we collect up in a vector a whole bunch of probabilities. Uh, the probabilities will be non-negative, and, and if they add up to 1, then we call that thing a probability vector. So, for example, the vector of the dice rolling um, it would, would, could look like this. 1, 6, 1, 6. And this is the probability 1, 2, 3. There's four of them there. 5, 6. Okay? So that's a probability vector. Um, all the entries are positive, and when I add them together, they all add up to one, and in this case, each entry is is we're capturing, uh, like say the first entry, the probability of rolling a one, the second entry, probability of rolling a two, etc. So that is a probability vector. And if we have a, a um, more than one probability vector, and we make those things um, columns in in uh, a matrix, then that matrix that is formed, the matrix with for which each column is a probability vector is called a stochastic matrix. So that's that word there. Okay, so the Markov chain is a dynamical system whose state vectors at successive uh, time intervals are probability vectors, and for which the state vectors at successive time intervals are related by an equation of the form, um, uh, the state vector at time k plus one is p, the stochastic matrix times the state vector at time k. Okay, so this is just like is a is a is a list of uh, uh, state vectors and they are capturing each state vector is capturing what the underlying dynamical system is at that point in time. And you get a whole line uh, a whole list of them. Okay uh, the matrix P is is a called a uh, transition matrix for the uh, system, the dynamic, dynamical system that we are looking at. It captures how the state vectors change from one time increment to the next. This is, um, I think, relatively straightforward. Let's take an example and we can see uh, how this works. This is the same example that is in the textbook. And we have this idea that um, uh, 
probably by going out, say, and measuring in the field, you have three little areas where the lions like to be, reserve one, two, and three. And then um, if you, let's see here, monthly migration they're saying here. So what you're saying is you, you observe, you have um, a lion in, say, in reserve one at time zero. And then you go back one month later and you, you and and then you say okay there's a 50 percent chance so that he will he'll he'll still be in reserve one then there is a 30 percent chance he'll have that's this number here there's a 30 percent chance he'll have moved to reserve three and there is a 20 percent chance this number here he'll have who've, he'll has he'll will have moved to reserve two. So maybe in sense when you were measuring this, of course, one lion wouldn't potentially do it. But imagine if there was like a thousand lions or a hundred lions in reserve one, you would go you would go into go look in reserve one. You would say, hey, there's a hundred lions in there. A month later you would go back and you would observe that now there's 50 of those lions here. Um, 30 of them here and 20 of them here and then you would be able to come up with these numbers okay so you could measure these or there's there's some method that you have of getting these uh, uh, monthly migration patterns of your lions okay so now what we're going to do then is is we do that for the three reserves and we see what is the probability that the the lions move and we we, we capture that information and then what we can do is put that in to a transition matrix and that will look like this okay so this is uh, um, the first column here I'm looking okay this is the this is the line that is in reserve one so I'm going to say in reserve one and then we're going to look at the probability that, that this column is going to capture the probability he goes to one well that's kind of staying there he's in one he he goes to one that's staying in one he goes to two and then he goes to three. So the probability that the lion, when he is in one, stays in one is that number right there. That goes there. And then the probability that he moves to two is this number here. So we put that here. And then the probability he goes to three is this one here. Okay, so that is for reserve one. Then we look at reserve two. Okay, reserve two, this is gonna be this column. So now we're in two, and we wanna know what, what is the probability that we go to one, we stay in two, or we go to three. So two to one, uh, two to one is uh, 0.4, staying in two is 0.2, and uh, two to three is 0.4. Okay, then we do the same thing for reserve three. We look at reserve three. What is the chance that you go from reserve three to reserve one? That is six. What is the chance you go from three to two? That is uh, 0.3, and what is the chance that you stay where you are? That is 0.1. So this is a stochastic matrix. Um, each one of these um, are probability vectors. All of the numbers are positive, and uh, if I add up the columns, they all add up to one. Okay, so once we've got this thing set up like this, this then allows us to um, track what we would have, have happen over numerous months. So we, we have an initial state, and then we can simply take our initial state, multiply it by this transition matrix, and understand what our probabilities are for one month down the road. And then we can do it again, find out what, what we expect to see two months down the road, etc. So let's just do that and um, observe what happens. So we, we get told in this way here, the lion is released into reserve two at time equals zero. So we know exactly where he is. Uh, at time t equals zero, and we can capture that in a state vector. So that is here at time t equals zero. Uh, we have the the where the lion is at time zero. That is going to look like this. He's for, for sure he's not in reserve one. He's he is absolutely for sure in reserve two, 100% probability, and he's not in reserve three because we know where he is, right? 100% chance he's in reserve two. We got told where he is. Okay, 100% chance in reserve two. Okay, then we can compute where he is likely to be or where the probabilities are uh, after one month has gone by. Okay, so we take our transition matrix and we multiply it by our state vector at time t equals zero, and then that will give our, us our state vector at time t equals one.
0, 0, 1, 0. So that's our, that, this is our time 0, this is our time 1. We, we do this matrix multiplication, and that is um, this thing here, 0 0.4, yeah, 0 0.2, and 0 0.4. So this is not uh, super um, illuminating yet, because really we could have figured this out without doing this, because let's take a look at this. We know he was in reserve 2. And we know that the chance that he stays there, just from our diagram, is a 20% chance. And then we all we see that these two numbers are 0.4 and 0.4. So that has just captured that uh, um, that first movement. But now, actually, uh, we have we have this uh, breakdown of probability of where the lion is. And uh, now what we can do is we want to know where he is at time two months. We take where he is at time one month. And we multiply, whoops, that should be x of 2. Okay, so we take that same p, there it is. And we multiply it where he is at time 1. Then again, you thank your lucky stars that computers have been invented and you would of course do this in a computer you would not be doing this by hand but you do this uh, matrix multiplication you can do this one by hand if you want to get these numbers here it's always good to make a quick check that this this add up to a hundred or one add up to one hundred percent because if it didn't uh, it would be like <laughs> either if it was less than a hundred it'd be like a possibility of a disappearing lion or if it was more than a hundred it would be sort of a, you know um, spontaneously coming into existence lions okay so this means that there's a 52 percent chance after two months that the lion is in reserve one and there's a 24 percent chance that he is in uh, reserve two or three Okay, you can see how this goes. You just now keep going and going and going, calculate x3, x4, and you get this chain of uh, 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 state vectors. You get x0, x1, x2. Okay, so now a question hmm, that uh, maybe occurs to you is, does it reach some sort of steady state after a large period of time? Is it such that yeah, the, the, the movement, the, the transition matrix, along with the distribution of lines, is such that for all further times, there's effectively no change? in the distribution of the lions in their different reserves. Okay, so let's see if we can answer that question. So, I mean, you can see that x3 is going to be p times x2, and we know what x2 is. x2 is p times x1, p times x1, and then what is x1? x1 is p times x0. Okay, so that is uh, p cubed times x naught. So I could then, I without sort of further ado, I could say, well, you know, x10, for example, will be p10 times x naught. So I don't really have to calculate x1, x2, x3. I could instead take the 10th power of the transition matrix and do that one matrix vector multiplication and come out with p10. I'm sorry, come out with x10 without calculating x1, x2, like that. So we would then uh, see here a necessity for computing uh, powers of a matrix. Okay, uh, that's pretty much what I want to say, say about that. You can um, just take a look uh, uh, in our Busby textbook, uh, page 229. Uh, it, it, it goes through a few more of these calculations. Okay, but it, they're, they're not complicated calculations. You just keep multiplying the matrix times the previous uh, state vector. Okay, so now the big question really is the only question we're really going to answer here of sort of any novelty is uh, how would we know if there is some sort of steady state behavior that's re uh, reached or will it be the case that the, the, the population continues to fluctuate up and down um, over time? Okay, so let's, that is the question we will answer. So I'll get a little bit more uh, uh, words here. Uh, a stochastic matrix P is said to be regular. If P or some positive power of P has all positive entries. Uh, and a Markov chain whose transition matrix is regular is called a regular Markov chain. So let's just first answer the first question here. Is the wildlife mar migration um, Markov chain regular? Okay, let us, let us just write that matrix again here so we can see what it is. It is this guy here.
Okay, and uh, what 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 does it have to be to be regular? That means the uh, matrix P. Well, we have P here, or some positive power of P has all positive entries. I mean, P itself has all positive entries. Okay, so the answer here is yes, uh, because P has all positive entries. Okay, so now let's take a look at another uh, transition uh, matrix, and we want to assess uh, the regularity of it. Okay, so we're taking a look uh, at P. There it is. And I mean, right now, it, it, P does not have all positive entries, right? Because there's some of them are zero. Okay, so then the next thing we have to do is take a look at the powers. So let us just make note of that. P has zeros. So not, not all entries are positive. Um, so then the, my next thing is to then, then say, okay, then, um, what about the powers of P? Okay, so let me calculate P squared. That is going to be 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. That is going to be this, 1, 0, 0, 1. Okay, that still has zero. That still has zero entries. So we have not found yet a power that um, of p that has all positive entries. So I then do try another one, p cubed, and that's going to look like this. Take p squared and multiply it by p, and I get this guy here. And I see that that is, uh, in fact, p. So I can see what's going to happen when I do p to the 4. I'm going to get the same thing as p squared. So I can see this is just going to go back and forth. So it will uh, simply go back and forth. Okay, so then I'm never going to end up uh, with p to the, so, so, uh, so then therefore p to the k will have zero entries. Uh, for every pow every every k uh, greater than well this is a k will also be a well this like that k n n okay um so therefore p is not regular okay we'll see why this is important in two seconds here this is the uh the final the final uh, situation and really the most important uh, point here so if the transition matrix is uh, if p for a is regular we have a regular markov chain then this will happen p times q will be equal to q there is a unique probability ve vector such that this happens and so and then for and in any for any initial probability vector x naught um, the sequence of state vectors approaches q as a limit. So this means, like in the case, for example, we, we saw we saw that the uh, wildlife uh, transition matrix is regular. So that means that we, if we calculate x1, x2, x3, after a period of time, we see that there's basically going to be no change in the state vector, and we'll have reached an equilibrium. Okay, that which we call the steady state vector of the Markov chain. It's a fixed point of the transition matrix. And uh, we already saw how to find fixed points of matrices. So it is a fixed point of the transition matrix. So we can figure out uh, what that vector is Q by solving this system of linear equations. Okay, let's just quickly uh, write out what that is. So we're going to now say we've got our, our Lyon situation as laid out on the second slide. And we want to know Okay, let's let a lot of time go by and then see what the distribution of lions looks like in the three reserves. Okay, so I, I take P. There it is. I take um, I minus P. That is uh, that guy there, I minus P. And 
and I get this guy here, uh, 0 0.5 minus 0 0.4 um, minus 0 0.6 minus 0 0.2, 0 0.8, minus 0 0.3, minus 0 0.3, minus 0 0.4, and 0 0.9. There it is. Okay, so I have I minus P, and then I want to find Q such that I minus P times Q is equal to 0. So that amounts to solving the linear system this guy here using our, our Gauss-Jordan elimination. Okay, I'm not going to do this. Make a I, I, I'm just going to write out the answer. Um, I'm going to make just a couple of comments though. So this is this is our, our Gaussian elimination. Okay, and then if you're if you're doing this, uh, uh, using fractions is a good idea. Using fractions, okay, that that way you, you when you get the repeating decimal like one third or something like that, you don't have to truncate. So you to keep the precision, use fractions um, to uh, eliminate um, truncation error. You'll get a more accurate answer. Okay, so that's a small point. Okay, when you do this Gaussian elimination, um, you will find that Q, the the solution here is it's uh, there's a it's there is a free variable and it so the the solution uh, there is an infinite supply of solutions. It looks like this to this system to this system of linear equations. It looks like that, but we have the constraint here that we want all of the, we expect and 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 what, what the context that we're working in here is that these three numbers in this uh, column vector will add up to one because they are a probability so what we do is we select t so that these um, so that the uh, this the column the the entries in this column add up to one okay so that's our idea of what to do we select t uh, so that um, 15 eighths t plus 27 over 32 t plus t uh, is equal to 1. And with that value of t, we report out what our expected steady state distribution of the lines uh, is going to be. So it will be this these numbers here. Okay, so that is the uh, anticipated steady state uh, behavior. So this means basically, um, roughly speaking, there's a 50% chance uh, the lion is in uh, reserve one. And then there's a basically about a 23% chance the lion is in reserve two, and then a 27% chance the lion is in reserve three. Okay, so then uh, if you're going to bet, you know, uh, uh, okay, here's 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 some lions, and this is how they move around. Where do you expect your lion to be at the end of the game? Uh, what you what you would do is, of course, uh, if you maximize your chance of winning by betting that the lion would be in reserve one. Okay, so this is just an, one application um, of matrix multiplication, uh, uh, finding a, a fixed point. That's it for this section. I'll be back with another application in section 5.4. Thank you. Bye.